stream on Twitch and YouTube, such as uh, T Pain, Danny Brown, and T Grizzly. And uh, even uh, Drake has become an owner of one of the largest esports organizations in the world that, called the uh, 100 Thieves. And even uh, politicians, AOC and Jagmeet Singh, joined in on a Among Us live stream not too long ago. Yeah, I actually watched that too. That was that was really cool. <laughs> the AOC Jagmeet Singh video gaming session. It was it was awesome. So in 2024, the Olympics in Paris will feature esports for the first time ever, but it's not in the way you think. So they're actually they won't be classified as a sport, and they're gonna take place live. So you could take place, uh, or sorry, so you compete with the athletes. I should say. So. In terms of games we spoke about, such as NBA Jam or any of these really not so, I would say, sports related video games, they won't be featured at the Olympics. What the um, IOC is trying to do, they're trying to integrate real life movement in these games. So, like games more so that promote. Um, I would say athletic abilities will be highlighted, but other ones that are just completely unrealistic, such as League of Legends, Rocket League, et cetera, et cetera, they won't be featured in the Olympics, unfortunately. But I think 2024, just having them in there, I think they're going to gain a lot of traction. And by 2028, I think you will see them as a recognized sport in the Olympics. But that, that's just my opinion. So I, I put a little timeline together here. Um, so in 2023, viewership is projected to increase over 600 million. So to put that into perspective for you, Netflix has a weekly viewership of 400 million a, a week, which is that, that that's nuts. They're 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 beating them by 200 million, and this is watching people play video games. Um, so in 2025, esports uh, players, they want to be treated like actual athletes. So they want the salary, they want the benefits, but they have no channels to protect themselves. So um, they're looking at forming a player union right now. Um, in 2025, because of the growth, there's going to be way, way more risks in esports, such as cheating polit politicization etc cetera, etc cetera. there's going to be a lot more risk for this industry to take on as it grows exponentially and by 2025 i predict that the aoc ioc i should say aoc will consider deeming esport as an olympic sport so in my opinion like it, they, it does take a lot of hand eye dexterity I think they will consider it an eSport, but I think we're still a little bit away from, from that. All right, and here we have, uh, this is kind of breaking, more breaking news, uh, this article. It's in the source there if you want to click on it. It's really cool. Coming to Toronto, it's actually going to be um, the Exhibition Fairgrounds, uh, Overactive Media, which is a conglomerate um, of uh, companies, actually sports teams, esports teams, Toronto Defiant, the uh, Toronto Ultra, and the Mad Lions are uh, all investing in this facility. It's going to be a $500 million venue. What's really cool about this is that the venue um, is being built specifically for esports instead of them piggybacking off of uh, another venue and using their arena. Uh, just seeing the infrastructure um, being built on this level is a uh, especially that kind of money being spent, just let you know that it's uh, definitely going to be here to stay and uh, they see it being a huge money maker in the future or they wouldn't invest in it. So next slide, please, John. We have um, job opportunities. Um, this is going to be uh, huge and it can't be uh, overstated. But once this web starts to grow, um, jobs are just going to keep, um, keep coming up because it's not going to be just the... Um, the jobs directly uh, in the industry, like the people running the tournaments and the guys actually gaming, but you're gonna see, for instance, when this arena opens, um, 
you're going to see uh, so many more jobs uh, in different uh, different areas that aren't necessarily uh, e-gaming jobs, but they're going to be jobs that are only there because of um, you know the, the situation. So. I believe the next slide kind of just touches on the same thing, basically just letting you know that even in Canada, a relatively low ranking country in terms of uh, just sheer esports numbers, you're even beginning to see uh, a lot of uh, job growth and opportunities. If you just check indeed.com uh, for esports jobs, you'll see a ton of them on there. And then there is our bibliography, and that is our presentation. Thanks for listening, guys. Yeah, do you, do you guys have any questions or anything we can answer for you? No? Okay, that's what I like to hear. That means you guys understood us. I can ask a few questions, maybe the uh, bit of a discussion. Um, yeah, sure. Just, uh, I know when you're talking about esports, people think of, you know, actual activity and sports. So I know you did talk a little bit about the esports that are actually sports and esports that are sort of not sports. So it's uh mm -hmm. like the you know shooter games or whatever they are. Like, do you think there's much difference in the skill or is it just sort of the the game that people choose to play? I think like the skills that are at hand. So you're talking about eye dexterity, hand dexterity reflex and i think those are all proponents that take factor into doesn't matter what game you're playing now in the in the eyes of the ioc they don't want to look at these unrealistic games as being esports so the things that they're integrating into their own system will be olympic athletes that are playing esports but the games have content of athletic ability which to me makes a bit more sense so you'll see people playing 2K in the Olympics, but you won't see people playing Call of Duty. And if I could just chime in on that, I think that um, I don't like that because I feel like games like Call of Duty and stuff like that, uh, it's more sheer skill based, whereas some sporting games involve a lot more chance and luck um, just in the way that the games are programmed. And I feel like uh, that could be an issue down the line if they don't uh, kind of figure that out a bit more. I think it's pretty similar to like if you go play pickup basketball, that doesn't make you an NBA player. If you call a duty, it doesn't make you a professional esport athlete. They're professional NBA players and professional esport athletes are playing the same thing you are, just at an elite level. Yeah. Yeah, it is kind of like a Matt, that what you were saying. Uh, I think you're right. Like if you play NBA or whatever it is, you, you know, you draft your team and you set your skill levels and your you know, there's a lot of different variables, but, you know, in, in COD, you're, you know, you're shooting and it's like you against whoever else, maybe guys in your team or your individual, but uh, uh, it, it definitely, you know, when you look at it that way and also thinking with like IOC, when you look at, inter or, you know, there's a, we could have a debate forever on Olympic sports, right? When you look at uh, archery, you know, people are using a piece of machinery to you know shoot an arrow at a target right like how athletic is that right? and it's like, funny it's funny that you say that because that was that's literally my argument number one when, when debating this topic the archers are stationary and rely heavily on hand and eye dexterity to hit their target there to me there's not much difference in that than an esports athlete personally yeah and going forward you're going to see virtual reality begin to become an even bigger thing in gaming and things like archery you're going to be able to replicate that without shooting an arrow into anything um just just virtually so yeah and that was, and since you brought that up matt i was going to actually ask you about virtual reality and just because you know there is more movement involved in it it could be that you know you're We've all, you know, probably all seen people wearing helmets or goggles or gloves or that sort of thing to immerse themselves in the game. And do you, do you think that could be sort of what's going to happen in the future? Is this that that's become more popular or is it sort of too cost prohibitive? 
I think right now it's it's kind of in that stage where it's cost prohibitive and but like any technology, you're going to see it level off, kind of like the Oculus Rift, which was a, a virtual reality gaming system that's kind of affordable now for regular people. But you're going to see augmented reality too, which is like, like you said, wearing the suit with, where you can feel vibrations and different things as you're playing. And that's going to, uh, it's going to send it into the stratosphere. Nobody's going to want to play regular video games. Uh, after you have an experience like that so what video game developers are, are really trying to do now they they really want to make you feel like you're a part of the game and i truly believe that in a few years from now they're going to master that you'll literally be able to put a suit on and be in the game <laughs> so i think that uh that that's definitely coming it's just a matter of when Exactly. Yeah, I think uh, there's definitely been so much advancement since 1972 when you said that, you know, the first uh, esports tournament. Now, I imagine that all three of you guys have uh, watched Ready Player One. Yes. Like, yeah. Is that, uh, and that is definitely, you know, it's kind of a neat way they put it into a movie, as we are, you know, obviously based on a book, but uh, a person that is actually immersed into the game so those are like game like pods that they are or however they hook you know hook up to the the game it's definitely sort of the future i look at the future of how how um you know how any sports can be played and how you can really get into the game and you know be individual have your avatar and so on right it's kind of cool thing to imagine and the advancements with e-gaming across like any field that I personally see, they make strides more than like than like the medical field. It, it's just like every development that happens in that field is huge. So I, I really like that about it. Okay, excellent. Well, thank you very much, uh, you three, for the, the presentation. Um, I'm going uh, uh, strong since uh, 8 a.m. We're gonna give you a break now till 9. 30. So that's going to be a uh, break uh, just to take um, you know, a little bathroom break, get a drink, do whatever. So we'll be back at 9 30. Okay, it's 9.30 and I'm uh, gonna get back out of here. Um, I did have a few questions. Uh, next week we have um, Ashlyn, your group is presenting. Now, how have you been able to connect with the rest of the, or any of your other members, Ashlyn? If you're back, or Jess Stockdale, um, connected with Jess. Okay. Now, the Kyle, I don't know if you're going to get hold of the Kyle or not. I don't know if he is in school or not. So, I don't know if you've had any um, luck with the Kyle. Um, I know Sam Bav, Sam has definitely been involved in uh, some weeks. So as long as you're sending it, as long as you guys are making attempts to connect, that's good. That's next week, concussions. Okay. Let me that for a second. And the guys that just presented, so please email me your presentation. Thank you, uh, Matt or Rob or Nick, one of you three, thank you. Oh, Matt, you're still on, that's good. Okay, well, let's go, yeah, I know Nikhil's on the class list, but he, I don't think he's been in, been around. I haven't seen him. He was in my class last year, in a different class, so maybe over a year ago. Yeah. Okay. Uh, 
Okay, okay, so let's get into the next module. It is the concession capital spending. I just pull up the concept overview. I will share it. Give me one minute. Get this shared. Okay, here we are. All right, so this is a concept or overview, concept overview of uh, concessions capital spending. Okay, so capital spending project is defined as a project that takes significant amounts of resource, labor, and finance, finances, so resources, labor, and finances to undertake and complete. And it's gonna, you're trying to help maintain or improve the venue or building in any undertaking. The important aim of capital investment decision is to increase the franchise value. And for example, the decision to build out more concessions was what we're talking about in this is building concessions, a better fan experience through less weight in concession lines and increased variety of food options. So. The main thing on this sim is that you're trying to find that balance between too many and too little. So if you have too many, you're losing money. If you have too little, sorry, if you have too little, you're losing money uh, because you're not uh, providing the service to all your fans that want the concession stands. And if you have too many, you're wasting money because you have uh, more than they need, okay? So better fan experience through less weight in concession lines and increase in a variety of food options, right? It's important for, for a venue to assess whether the money it invested into the project was worthwhile. We're going to be talking about how much a concession stand costs to build. It's fifty thousand dollars in this sim. Okay, and we will be talking about that a little bit. Uh, return on investment. So ROI. We hear about that a lot. Okay, what is your return on investment? You might hear that talked about uh, with when you listen to any sort of investment shows or talk podcasts or stuff on that. Um, then you have your profit loss statement with projections of the future revenues. The venue should calculate in the cost of a capital project would have and the eventual profits it would need to make in order to make the capital project worth investing in. Okay. Um, so status, whoops, status quo versus capital project. So status quo, these are some terms that uh, we will they will ask in the quiz, quiz more to static status quo. And capital costs are defined as the total costs needed to bring a project to commercial oper operable status, commercially operable status. Okay. And so therefore, um, so this part may include purchasing of land equipment. Okay, so you're doing a capital project, you may have to purchase land or equipment, even hiring the general or subcontractors part of it. Um, therefore, a venue must determine whether the capital project investment will yield greater return than maintaining the status quo. So we have to figure that out when we're doing this Sam. Okay, should we leave it the same? Just because we have one game that we have lots of fans at, do we open up and build another concession stand when our other eight games are lower attendance? Like, let's say we have 12,000 in all our games, but we have one game where we have 18,000. Are you going to build a, a new concession stand? Probably not. All right. Uh, valuation analysis. Valuation analysis is used to evaluate the potential merits of an investment be objectively to objectively assess the value of a business or asset. It will determine what something is worth. Okay. So your valuation analysis, it will determine what something is worth. Then there's the net present value or NPV. That will be on the quiz. Remember what NPV stands for, net present value. 
Uh, calc this calculation determines the present value of the project's projected future income. In the calculation, the present value of the project cost is subtracted from the present value of future income. Okay. Remember, there will be something on this. Okay. It's always good. You can have the Concept overview open when you're doing the quiz. That would probably help. Uh, return on investment. Okay. Deals with the money a revenue invests in a project and the benefit return it realizes on the investment. The most frequent used method to calculate ROI is to divide the net profit of investment by the cost of investment. Okay. And there go through a formula here. But we will um, we'll look at this just quickly. In a concession context, if a venue invests hundred thousand dollars in the five new concession stands, about the same, so they are twenty thousand dollars each, which led to five hundred thousand in increased concession sales. The return on the investment was four hundred percent. Okay, so what they the way I'd like to describe it is you have $100,000. That equals 100%, right? $100,000 is 100%. If you increase to $500,000, how many 100% are getting you up to the 500,000? So there's really, there are $400,000 that you're increasing. So it's 100,000 and it's 200,000, which is 100% increase. If we went from 100,000 to 200,000, that would be 100% increase. 300,000 to 200%. 300,000, 400,000, 500,000, up to four times, which was the 400%. Okay? So that's how I kind of look at it. Just remember that this 100, oops, 100,000 is the 100%. And then to get up to 500, Thousand, it's basically do it. Some people might say, well, it's 500%. Well, no, it's the 400%. Okay, because it's taking that 100,000 and then the next 100,000 is 100%. So getting up to 200,000 is 100%. Okay, 500,000. Um, and then they have a formula how you do it right here. Okay, um, I was describing it 500,000 minus 100,000 divided by 100,000. Okay, so you're taking your 500,000, you're subtracting your investment, okay, divided by 100,000 equals four, expressed as a percentage, four times 100 equals 400,000. Okay, it is actually a pretty simple formula. A return on investment is used to compare the strength of all investment the team engages in. Okay, and there's another example there, uh, optimizing of concessions based on the average attendance of events, the average spending on concessions. We want to find out what the average spending is. A venue will need to determine how many concession stands it will make available for fans. For example, the United Center downtown Chicago hosts the Chicago Bulls, Chicago Blackhawks, every NBA and NHL season, and hosts the UFC event through the season. Okay, the Bulls and the Blackhawks pull in about 22,000. I haven't been to this, the, um, this, that uh, stadium, but I heard it's quite good. 22,000 nightly attendance. Uh, but for the UFC, they only bring in about half, right? Would not be, uh, if they, what would it make sense if the games, the NBA and the NHL games where they had uh, 22,000 people that they had the same concessions as when they had the just over 11,000. So, no, I don't think so. That would, would it make sense? Would it? So they want to make sure that they have less concession stands open with less attendance, right? So that's the, how you optimize optimization of concessions, spending on concessions. Each part uses a metric called fan cost index. All right, we're gonna to need to, I can draw with this pen. I have 
a little bit better up. Okay, to gauge the cost. So this is one, you're gonna to need to know this, okay? Cost for taking a family of four to a game. We're gonna to need to know this metric. So it's four tickets. You're gonna say, well, what if my family is three or what if my family is five or what? No, this is based on four, okay? So four tickets, two beers, you know, two small beers for the parents or for, you know, maybe they're, I don't know, probably for the parents. Four soft drinks or hot dogs. Parking, because we're going to parking, two programs and two adult size cots, least expensive. Okay, so there's all these um, things, these different variables that plug into a little formula. Okay, so team can use this metric to calculate the average pricing of the most commonly purchased items at a concession stand as one way to project sales at concession. And this is just an average. Okay, so some families may come in and not buy any uh, concessions. Others might buy twice as much. So that's what you were trying to get the average. The average pricing of the most commonly purchased items, okay? Individual teams will also have metrics that are specific to its own unique concession stand food. Okay, so if you're at, um, Brian Burke used to be the uh, GM for Toronto. I think it was the GM. Uh, and when he, he was fairly popular at one point and at the ACC at the time, uh, they had the hot dog stand called Burke's Dogs. So, you know, that was an individual type of concession. Um, every, you know, stadium is sort of famous for different things. If you go to um, <clears throat> a stadium in, you know, whatever it's Kaminsky Park or whatever it is, they have their hot dogs or, I don't know, poutine or something like that, or I'm not sure, but they, I'm trying to come up with examples. I can't think of any at the time, at this time. Uh, but different uh, stadiums have different sort of specialties that you might uh, find, okay? Might be churros or something like that. Um, so what food I'm still, uh, when do individuals go to concession sets? So you need to know this, the fan cost index. There will be questions on the quiz on that. Okay, but when we come down to the key terms, net present value, right? We need to, to know that definition for the quiz, optimization, maximize certain metrics such as profit, return on investment, uh, you need to understand or just Remember what ROI stands for. That is quo, exist, current existing state of the business, and valuation analysis. Okay. Um, and just if you're, hold on a second, is uh, yeah. we have done the, uh, so this is our second module that we've done today. So we have done the concession earlier, and now we were in the, the concession capital spending. So we are doing two modules today, uh, just for those that are wondering if you've joined late. Okay, so that's why we are doing the concession capital spending right now. I'm going to just stop this for a second, and I am going to. Just find it here. You're always looking for things. I will um, make uh, the quiz is available for session capital spending. So it's 946 right now. Um, I'll give you a few extra minutes here. We'll go to 1005. Okay, so 1005. So the quiz is open. How about we'll go 10, 10, okay? We'll do 10, 10, so that'll give you just over 20 minutes, okay? So you have to, until 10, 10 to do the, uh, the quiz. And at 10, 10, I will come back and go through the learning phase of the concession capital spending, the learning phase, all right? Uh, 
going to be exciting. So make sure you tune in. I'll be back in, at, I'll stay online actually, but I'll be here for questions. Um, but I'll come unmute myself back at uh, 1010. All right. Okay, we made it to 1010. We lost a few of our classmates, but that's okay. I am going to take you through the the learning phase. I'm going to just open this up, make it available, and I will also make available the challenge phase. It will now take you through the learning phase of the concession capital spending, and let me share my screen. All right, here we are looking at the concession stand. So we have one of 14 steps to go through. I'll walk you through each one of these. Okay, it won't take too long, but it's uh, always nice to hear someone talk about it. Um, the learning phase will introduce you to the concept of capital spending using concession stands as an example. So we don't, it doesn't really break right down into popcorn machines and drink machines and fryers and that sort of thing, ice cream machines. It talks just about the concession stand, okay? So if you would open the concession stand, you're getting everything that you, you need, your cash registers and so on, okay? Um, so you can click on actions, concessions. Uh, in the practice franchise, you have no concession stand to start. You can see up here zero and zero, no employees either. Uh, so you have to start uh, by building additional stands. Let's see right here. Click on building additional stands. So building additional stands. Okay. As the form indicates, it will cost you 50,000 to build that one stand. Click, uh, actually hold it. Cancel that for a second. Hit next. Um, enter one in the concession stands to build. So we want to build one. There we go. Hit okay. Now that you have built a concession stand, so that's how easy it is to build, but you just spent uh, 50,000, right? Um, enter one in the concession stands to open now. So if you built one, you can open one. If you hadn't built one, you wouldn't be able to open one. Okay. To open the stand costs thirty thousand three thousand dollars to open it. Okay. Um, enter six. It's the number of employees per stand. Okay. Uh, the other concession stand decisions, prices, and purchases are made for you. So in this sim. We don't have to worry about this part down here that we did in the last one. Okay. We don't need to hear about the price units or units to buy or the price. That's done in the previous one, which we talked about earlier. And uh, you can click OK. So we're going to click, um, sorry, click OK here and then start. That's already on Sunday. So let's hit start. You can see all the employees are lined up, ready to work. All the popcorns filled. Soda. Everything's ready to go. We're getting close. See here the popcorns over here. You got one, two, three, four, five, four, six employees. Okay. Looking pretty busy. Seems to be a lot of lineup. Holy smokes, lots of lineup. They're sold out. No, not sold out with everything. Okay. So we're going to let it run out. And the question is, what was your total concession profit for the game? And this is going to pop up. And we see here that we made 36053 Okay, hit next. You saw each concession stand cost 50000 to build. With one stand, you made a profit of 36000 in one game. At this rate, how many games would it require to recoup your $50,000 investment? So 50,000, it'll take you two games, right? $36,000 in one game, make another 36,000 the next game, you've recouped your investment. Click on two. Four, now consider the longer term by looking at return on investment, ROI, which we talked about. Return on investment is profit divided by investment. In this case, your investment is $50,000, so profit, divided by investment, okay? 
and you spent the concession, assume that you continue to make 36 in concession profit per game, one season for eight games. Okay, so over two seasons, what would you return on investment? So we have to look at your, um, the, is divided, um, sorry, profit divided by investments. What's your profit? So we know that you continue to make, let's get this into the, Calculator here, 36053. Concession profit per game, and that one season comes into eight games. So for two seasons, so we have to multiply by eight. So 36,053 by eight, because it's eight games, equals this under 288,000. We're going to have to multiply that by two, because it's two seasons. So it's about 576,000, and we're going to divide it by investment, which is $50,000. Okay, so divide it by $50,000 equals 11.53, but we put it into a percentage, it comes out to this number right here, 1,153. Okay, so again, just so you understand what I'm doing, ROI, return on investment, is you're taking this number here, 36,053, and you know you're playing eight games, you'll multiply it by eight. Okay, so this number by eight, and then you know you're doing two seasons. Oops, can't get over that, two seasons. Uh, so you have eight games each season, so 36,053 times eight times two, and then you divide by your investment, 50,000. Okay, that's how you get that. Next, obviously, that's a great return. And that's why every sports venue has at least one concession stand, right? Um, are people happy with how things were run at the concession stand? Line was too long. I'm that's a lot of people 8,500 people right here. That's a lot of people that were not happy. Right? So we go down to here. You know that no, there were over 8,000 complaints and log lines. There we go. Next. Sounds like you need more stands. Click close uh, on the event report. Click actions, concessions. Build an additional three cents. So build no, three. You know, it's going to cost you $50,000. So it's going to be $150,000, right? And build three. Hit OK. Enter four here because you now you have four concession stands that you're able to open. All right. Uh, click OK and we're going to hit start. So we're already at Sunday the 10th. So start. Oh, let me speed this up a little bit. Let's go to the next week. Thursday, for, uh, Saturday, Sunday. Here we go. We're at the game. Just keep an eye on it. That was quick. Maybe I should have slowed that one down a bit. But look at the customer comments. Wow, only 396 people complaining. That's pretty good, right? I think that's pretty reasonable. So no more people than ever complained. Yes, there are only a few hundred complaints now, right? Next. Great, people are much happier at the concession. Look at the total concession profit in the event report. This is the event report that we have open already. Uh, your concession profit for the first game was 36,000. What happened to the concession profit for this game compared to the first game? It stayed approximately the same? No, it increased a few thousand. No, it increased by more than 100%. Correct, it did increase by more than 100%. If our first one was 36,000, and we've gone up to 79, that's more than 100%. Next, profits went way up by adding those extra stands. Given your concession profit was 79,000, what was your profit per stand? Okay, we had four stands open. So if we take 79648 divided by four equals, what does it equal? 19,912. Okay, that's how much each stand is making. 
four stands, the profit per stand went down, right? Because we know at our, when we had one stand open, we had 36,053 per one stand and we went to four stands, we're only making 19,912. Okay, if we can close this, hit next. Let's, this is a learning phase. Let's see what happens. We took the number of stands to the extreme by clicking actions, sessions, click build additional stands to eight. So we're gonna build eight. Okay, and for 12, because now we have 12 total stands that are available because we built 12, 12 there. Hit okay. And we're gonna hit start. Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, I'm gonna slow it down here a bit. 20, Sunday, just so we can see what happens a little bit easier, a little bit. Oh, we're at 11, almost at noon. What time's the game start? Uh, hopefully soon, these people are getting, they've been standing there for a few hours waiting. Oh, here they come. Uh, it's looking kind of, yeah, that doesn't look too bad. Let's look at the event report when it pops up. There we go. Ooh. It was, okay, what happened to your concession profits this time? Okay. It was a loss greater than 22,000. Yes, that is correct. Now we're looking at this. We can click on that. Okay. Let's just see what the next thing's going to say. Session saying lost money at the last game. <clears throat> Two things that are happening here. First, you spent fifty thousand dollars times eight. So if you know that you have fifty, that's four hundred thousand dollars, I believe. And let me just double check that in my four hundred thousand dollars you spent to build those eight stands. You're losing money right there. So a cost that you're most likely not going to be able to recoup. And secondly, the cost to operate the stand with 12 concession stands are greater than the revenue earned resulting in the loss. That's because you have six employees at 12 concession stands. So you know you have 12 times six equals, I think, 72. Um, in the challenge phase, you will need to decide how many stands to build, primarily driven by expected attendance at the game. So you remember, you go to reports, event reports, it tells you your expected fans per game. Now, this one is the same all season because, oh, there's actually a bigger one there. Okay, it's not the same all season, my mistake. Let's see what happens here. But you're going to have to check the event reports on your challenge phase to make sure you know how many people are attending each game. Hit next. Let's see how it might work. Click reports. I think I was just there, event reports. Looking at the calendar, what's the estimated demand for the game on October 1st? We just click forward there, October 1st is 16,000. Boom, there we go. Hit next. Now you know how many customers to expect. Click actions, concessions, actions, concessions. On this, the text on the window tells you that one staffer, staffer can handle about 700 customers. So we know that it's uh, event reports that we have 16,000. That's one number to remember. So if you take 16,000 people, divided by 700, that will tell you how many staffers you need. So it's 22.85, which you have to round up. Um, so you have six staffers for each stand, how many stands will take to serve 16? So if you have 22, let's make round that up to 23. Uh, 23 people divided by six, because you have six people at each stand. 3.83. So we're going to need four right there. Okay. So and it's probably going to tell us to move this to four. We're going to hit next. 16,000 right here divided by seven times six rounds up to four. 
the capacity method to determine how many stands to build in the challenge phase, the advanced note is possible to build a stand for just one peak. It is possible that building the stand for just one peak game of the season has poor or negative return on investment because the incremental profits are less than the capital to build it. So, what I was mentioning earlier today is that you know, if you have one game that peaks, does it make sense to build that extra stand for fifty thousand dollars? Probably not. Okay, and I don't think we can run any more of these. Close. Um, let's see if we can. I know it's complete now. And I was going to show. Let's see if I can run. <clears throat> I think we can keep running. Let's speed that up to fifty. Slow it down a bit. Coming up to one o'clock, and that's when the customers start. Oh, yep. Perfect. <clears throat> okay, we've already finished, but we're going to look at this once more here. It's going to stop in a moment. Okay, if we click, so we show that we made 78,000 profit, we had four stands open, divide that by four, you know how much you're making. You just can click on that number as well. Your concession revenue was $160,000. Your concession expenses were cost of good, were cost of goods. They're telling you everything down here. Uh, 31,000 staff, 36,000 stand, concession stands, uh, 13,012 or 200, sorry. Your concession profit was, it'll tell you how it gets to that profit. Okay, so it just describes this number. I also want to just show you, so that's the um, learning phase. We click over to the challenge phase, if I can do that. It's still share showing me this. I'll just make sure I'm sharing the right one. Okay. Uh, just when you go through this, so your goal for this, so in the challenge phase is one million one hundred dollars for the total uh, season profit in your concession. So. Um, that's when you're going to be going through actions, concessions. Um, right now, you don't have any stands. You have to build some stands. Don't go like start with eight. You probably lose, won't make the 1,100,000. Uh, you know, you have to go to your reports, event reports, see how many stand, fans you have. So you have on this one, you have, you know, 12,000 expected at the first game divided by how many people staff are, so 700. This is to find out how many staff you need. It's just over 17. So let's say 18, right? If you have, need 18 employees, you're going to have six per stand. That means you're going to need to build three concession stands. So go in here. You no, know, you're going to go three. Okay. Now you can open three. Okay. And that's how you can start there. Go game by game. Um, you don't, in this sim, you don't uh, have to. Uh, set any of these. Okay, no, none of the prices are all set. It's basically the balance between concession stands you've built, concession stands you open, and the number of employees per stand. That's what you can go by. I didn't find this one too difficult to achieve at 1.1 million. Okay. And uh I think that's what I wanted to cover. It's 1029 right now. Um, I am going to stop the recording or stop sharing and I will stop recording. Um, and then people have, <coughs> I will stay on the line until everyone uh, disconnects. And if there's any questions, I'm here to answer them. Okay. So have a great Tuesday. Um, I'll see everyone next week.